The Human Rights Council held its 23rd session in Geneva from 27th of May to 14th of June 2013. The three-week session focused on critical human rights issues and culminated with the adoption of nearly 30 resolutions calling for increased attention and action from the international community. On the opening day, High Commissioner for Human Rights Navi Pillay updated the Council's 47 member states, observers and other participants from civil society on the latest activities of her office and on recent human rights situations around the globe. Time and again, delegates from all the countries present here today have solemnly agreed that the world must not permit the most extreme kinds of human rights violations. We have agreed that we have a duty to protect our fellow human beings, even if they are born in other countries, and even when they are being crushed by governments that have a claim to sovereignty over their territory. Drawing attention to the 20th anniversary of the signing of the Vienna Declaration and Programme of Action in June 1993, Pillay highlighted achievements made since, and also challenges which still remain. Since then, much progress has been made in prosecuting people responsible for the commission of crimes against humanity, war crimes and genocide. And there has been much discussion of the international community's responsibility to protect civilian populations from genocide, war crimes, ethnic cleansing and crimes against humanity. Taking center stage once again at the United Nations premier human rights body, was the situation in Syria for which an urgent debate of the Council was held during the first week of the session to address the recent killings in the town of Alcocer. Today, Turkey, along with Qatar and the United States, has felt it a duty to bring this man-made disaster to the Human Rights Council urgently. Urgent because, as we speak, a whole town continues to be under siege. There can be no lasting peace in Syria without justice for the horrific crimes committed in Qusair and elsewhere. In presenting its fifth report in less than two years to the Council, the Commission of Inquiry on Syria reported that there was increasing evidence of war crimes and human rights violations being committed by both sides to the conflict. Government forces, as you see in the report, and affiliated militia have committed murder, torture, rape, forcible displacement, enforced disappearances and other inhumane acts. It is an illusion that more weapons will tip the balance between the two parties. No one is winning, and no one will not win this war. More weapons will only lead to more civilians dead and wounded. Among the issues addressed by the 25 independent human rights experts, known as the special procedures, were the right to health, migrant rights, human trafficking, peaceful assembly, the freedom of opinion and expression, and summary or arbitrary executions, for which a report was presented by the Special Rapporteur on the emerging issue of lethal autonomous robotics. The disarmament community is the primary forum that deals with weapons as such. What needs to be addressed instead, and what, in, what falls in my view squarely within the domain of the Council, is the following question. Is it acceptable from the perspective of protecting life and human dignity that any kind of weapon that is used to kill humans, whether in peace or in war, will be controlled by autonomous robots. The Council also heard from the Special Rapporteurs for Eritrea, for Belarus and for the occupied Palestinian territories, as well as from the independent expert on Côte d'Ivoire. Reports of the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights on South Sudan and Mali were also presented during the session. Deputy High Commissioner for Human Rights, Flavia Pensieri. In particular, the mission documented cases of extrajudicial killing ethnically motivated violence, forced disappearances, torture, other forms of ill-treatment, illegal arrest and detention committed by Malian security forces as well as further displacement of civilians due to ongoing military operations conducted by the French and Malian forces in cooperation with troops from the African-led International Support Mission. Four interactive panel discussions were held, providing an opportunity for government and civil society participants to exchange views on key human rights issues, aiming to garner more support to advance common causes. These discussions focus on challenges to democracy and the rule of law, in both established democracies and states transitioning towards democracy, 
on the issue of the contribution of Parliament to the Council's universal periodic review process, on women's human rights and on the United Nations business and human rights agenda. One of the 100 plus side events held in parallel to the Council's main session was one which took the form of a 1,000 square meter walk through inflatable structure parked on the grounds of the Palais des Nations. The Luminarium provided a unique space for Council participants to unwind and think more creatively about how to make the work of the Human Rights Council better understood and applied around the world. Performing at the project launch was hip-hop artist and former child soldier from South Sudan, Emmanuel Chow. The creativity has been given a chance in a where human rights are finding different ways of, of reaching out massive audience. At the conclusion of the session, the Council adopted 28 texts on a wide range of issues, including the human rights of migrants, technical assistance to the Central African Republic, to Somalia and to Guinea, discrimination against persons with albinism, the role of freedom of opinion and expression in women's empowerment, and on violence against women with a particular focus on ways to respond to rape and other forms of sexual violence. The Council also renewed the mandates of a number of special procedures, including the Working Group on the Issue of Discrimination Against Women in Law and in Practice, the Special Rapporteur on the Human Rights of Internally Displaced Persons, the Special Rapporteurs on the Situations of Human Rights in Eritrea and in Belarus, and of the Independent Expert on the Situation of Human Rights in Côte d'Ivoire. The Council also adopted the final outcomes of the Universal Periodic Review of 13 more countries, and at the close of the session, Council President Remigius Henschel of Poland also announced the appointment of individuals to serve as the independent expert for Haiti and the independent expert for Mali.